So today I've got my hands on the world's first seven nanometer handheld gaming console. So this is the incredible looking Aya Neo Pro. Check it out guys, feast your eyes on this beast. You've got a similar form factor as the Nintendo Switch and I'll quickly bring it in just to show you. So quick side by side with the Nintendo Switch OLED, you can see a similar button layout with a few extra buttons on the Aya Neo Pro. Um, it's also slightly bigger in size and a lot heavier and thicker than the Switch OLED. But this one here is an absolute monster when we talk about specs. Now, first of all, the dimensions, it's 255 millimeters in width, 106 millimeters in length, and it's 20 millimeters in thickness. Now the unboxing experience is quite neat. I just want to quickly share that with you. So lift up the flap, so you've got a plastic insert on top and it just basically tells you in detail what every button does. And um, you've got some of the specs at the bottom as well. You can see um, I will be going through the specs a little bit later in the video. Ultra fast SSD and RAM, it says. So if we just remove the insert, here's another closer look. Really cool. Here's the console. Of course, I have been using this for a while. You can see GTA 5 loading up on here natively. So we're not streaming the game. So I've installed it through Steam. Right, let's see what else we get in the box. So you've got some paperwork over here. It says Aya Neo on top. Let's see what we get. Power supply. There's the voltage information right there for you guys to check out. I believe it is a 60 watt fast charger. So you've got some universal attachments to use around the world. For us, of course, all we need is this one, the UK plug. And inside this box, you will find your Type-C to Type-C charging cable. And you're also getting two Type-C to USB-A adapters. And of course, the console itself. Now let's check out all the controls and buttons. So we've got dual joysticks, D-pad. You've got A, X, Y, and B. Trigger buttons on the top, L, B, R, B, L, T, R, T. And they do feel really good. Really nice trigger buttons, comfortable controls. Um, definitely console quality controls. Um, they don't feel cheap or inferior. You've got a few extra buttons on each side. So a Windows button, Escape button, TM and KB. And you've got a whole bunch of other buttons over here. If you press the H button, that brings up your overlay for Steam. And you've got a few other buttons that you can play around with. There is an FPS counter, which you can barely see, but it's at the top there. And you can see 30 frames per second GTA 5 playing natively. Um, and it plays great. It looks great. Yeah, definitely one of my favorite games of all time. Press TM and that will take you to Task Manager, Escape, and it will take you right back out. At the bottom, we have a Type-C port. So that is a full featured USB Type-C port. So it can be used for display output, charging the device and transferring data. And that is a Type-C 3.2 port. On the top, you've got a physical power button, volume control, headphone jack, another full feature Type-C port over here. Um, and then you have a standard Type-C port on the right, just for data transfer. There is a reset hole in between and you've got some vents on the top along with your triggers on each side. At the back, you will see a cooling fan. Um, so a physical fan to keep everything cool and you do have some vents at the bottom as well to aid the airflow. And I also like to mention, you've got dual vibration support in this unit. So when you're playing a game, you're gonna feel that console-like vibrations. This is a capacitive touchscreen. So you're looking at a seven inch H IPS display with an HD plus resolution and peak brightness of 500 nits. The display is bright and sharp with punchy colors and a decent contrast to go with it. The console is actually running full version of Windows 10 Home and it is upgradable to Windows 11 which should be available to download soon on this console. A quick look at system properties. You can see some of the information. Scroll up, you can see Windows 10 Home. I'll also show you the storage space. Now I have used quite a bit of storage space. I play, installed a lot of games, but you can see 941 gigabytes to begin with. So that's one terabyte. And you can see I've got half the storage left, but I have installed a lot of big games along with a lot of emulators. So we'll be going through all of that a little bit later in the video. So the Aya Neo Pro is powerful enough to run full PC AAA games. So games like GTA 5, Cyberpunk, Watch Dogs Legion, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, 
Horizon Zero Dawn. And you can play all of those games in HD resolution with at least 30 frames per second. Gameplay footage is coming up very soon. And the console itself is powered by the AMD Ryzen 5 4500U. That's a hexa-core chip. And you have 16 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM and one terabyte NVMe SSD storage. Now you're also getting Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth version 5. You've got three Type-C ports, as I showed you, capable of data transfer, display output, and fast charging. And speaking of charging, this console has a 47 watt hour battery inside, which takes around 90 minutes to fully charge with the included 60 watt charger. And battery life wise, you can expect around two and a half hours of solid gaming action playing AAA games like GTA 5. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and check out some gameplay footage. So before we start playing, just want to share the graphics settings with you. So resolution 1280 by 800, aspect ratio automatic. And you can see I've switched everything on very high. So this is the highest graphics of GTA. Everything has been bumped up. I can definitely get used to this. GTA 5 running natively on this AMD Ryzen beast. But just turn the volume off. Just want to let you hear the fan noise. So the fan noise is on. The fan is spinning. It's quite silent. It doesn't feel hot to the touch either. Um, I have been playing on and off for a while and it's quite cool to the touch. So cooling system is also pretty good, pretty efficient. So next game I want to try is Counter-Strike. So that's a bit of an old game. So let's see what sort of frame rates we're gonna get. Incendiary out. 83 frames per second. 92 is even jumping up to just over 100 frames per second. So looks incredibly smooth. Plays well. Let's go on to some emulation. So I am going to begin with PlayStation 2. Thank <laughs> you. 
next emulator I want to test is Switch. So as you guys just saw from Switch games, you're getting mixed results. Um, some games work, some games lag like hell. And I think that's got more to do with the actual software I was running. I don't think the game compatibility is quite there yet. Um, but everything else I played you saw worked absolutely fine. All right, time for some game streaming. We're gonna test out PlayStation now. And let's go ahead and load up The Last of Us. vibration. So now I'm going to try and connect to my PlayStation 5 and try and remote play from this. So as you can see, my controller is not being picked up. So remote play does work, but you're going to have to connect a PlayStation controller via the uh, USB port because the built-in controller is not going to work. So that's a huge shame. I would have loved to play my PlayStation 5 games with the built-in controller. That would have been a very neat feature. So one Type-C cable connected to my monitor and it's able to charge and display the output at the same time. So there you have it guys, that was the Aya Neo Pro. And if you're wondering about the price, well, this is priced just under 800 pounds. So yes, you can definitely pick up a more powerful PC or laptop for a cheaper price. But this is the world's first seven nanometer handheld gaming console. You are getting a Nintendo Switch-like experience, but with the added benefit of full Windows operating system, the gaming experience is actually quite enjoyable, even though it's limited to 30 frames per second for most demanding AAA titles like GTA 5, Cyberpunk, uh, Tomb Raider, and so on and so forth. Less demanding games will of course give you a higher frame rate. And this is also powerful enough to play your favorite emulation titles like PS2, PSP, Nintendo Switch, and so on and so forth. So expect a powerful performance. The controls do feel premium and responsive. The screen is HIPS, so it's slightly better contrast than regular IPS and also lower latency, so ideal for gaming. My overall gaming experience was very good. The build quality and comfortable controls are delightful. One thing to mention is the Aya Neo Pro weighs around 650 grams, which is quite heavy. So if you're planning on long sessions of gaming, uh, you may feel the strain on your wrists. 
Other than that, battery life is around two and a half hours playing AAA games. Or if you're doing web browsing, office applications, emails, etc., then you can expect around four to five hours of battery life. Now, the battery life can be extended if you go into power save mode. But overall, yes, I would have expected a better battery life, especially considering you have a generous 47 watt hour battery. Now, I do know that these games are power hungry, but fortunately, a 60 watt fast charger included in the box, full charge within 90 minutes, makes the battery life less of an issue. Also, having full version of Windows gives you that versatility so you can browse the web, stream videos online, you can get some office work done, and this is even powerful enough for some design work. Internal speakers are also quite loud and good quality with the option for a headphone jack, or you can even connect your own Bluetooth headphones or earbuds. Now, circling back to the price, for around 800, I feel this console is slightly overpriced. Even though I enjoy my overall experience, I love the controls, I love the form factor, I love the design and display, but I just feel at this price point, the expectation of at least 1080p at 60 FPS as the minimum for gaming is more realistic. If money is not an issue, then you will most likely enjoy the experience. Let me know what you guys think of the Iron Neo Pro. Is this something you can see yourself playing? And if so, what game would you play on this first? Do let me know in the comments. Meanwhile, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.